And um, <laughs> just kidding. That was terrible, terrible joke. Uh, so good to see everybody this morning. Isn't it good to be in God's house? You know, the only thing better <clears throat> than just being in God's house is being in God's house with people that you like. Um, and, and I just happen to like all of you, and um, I see some new faces this morning, and welcome to all of you who are um, joining us for the first time, whether here today in person or uh, at, from home today. We welcome everybody, and um, we're just glad to see you, glad to be in God's house, glad to, to be able to come and just worship Him and, and experience His presence together. Um, there is nothing, nothing, nothing that can ever take the place of worshiping our Lord, worshiping our God together as his people, as his children. Um, so, so never ever take this privilege that we have, this, this right that we have in this country and this privilege, never take it for granted. It is such, such a blessing. You do realize that there are people and there are places on this same planet that we live where they do not have this freedom. It's hard for us to even fathom that because we, we have never experienced that as a people. Um, but it is absolutely the reality for some people in the world. Um, so thank God that we get to gather and worship him freely in his house today. Um, you know, I, I, I don't ever want to um, just stand in this pulpit and be oblivious to things that, that are happening uh, in, in your world and in our world and as if we as the church and as his people, you know, exist in some kind of bubble because when we leave church on Sundays, we, we walk back out into a very real world, don't we? Um, a very, very real uh, things happening all around us. And so um, I, I don't know if I'm the only one, but it, it seems that as of late that, um, man, I have just not been myself a lot, uh, it, it seems. I mean, there has been times when I have been um, just kind of a, a different, I've just felt different. I think that's been the reality for all of us in light of the circumstances that we've all been living in and living through together. Um, for me, I have felt anxiousness. I have felt uh, fear at times, frustration at times, um, all kinds of uh, emotions, and they seem to be just kind of um, amplified um, here, here as of late, and I think maybe largely because of everything we see happening all around us. Um, it's no secret that, man, our, our, our country, you know, is, is, very, is very divided. It's no secret that there's been crazy things. Man, if you are a conspiracy theorist, you are having a heyday, aren't you? Because there are some things that we could all just jump on that bandwagon and go down that rabbit hole. And, and some of it might be true. I don't know. Um, some of it might not. But, um, but, but, but a lot of things that we, we can all get distracted by. How about that? We can all get distracted by what we see in the news, what we see in the headlines. Um, and, and it can become the focus of much of our time, much of our energy in, 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 in our hearts even. And um, I just want to say to you this morning, I'm not blind to everything that's happening in our world, in our, in our government, in Washington, D.C. Um, there, there, there are many things happening around us that, that are concerning that we see playing out before our eyes. Um, and, and a lot of it is so frustrating because a lot of it is, are, are, are things that we feel like we can't do anything about, right? Things that are out of our control. And that's what can be so distracting and so frustrating for us, things that are out of our control. Um, but I just want to help us bring a couple of things back home this morning, and that's this. Despite all the distractions that we see around us, how many would agree there, are, there is plenty to be distracted by? Plenty to be distracted by, plenty to be weighed down by, plenty to, be, uh, to, to cause us to feel distracted, anxious, heavy. That, that, that's something that I have felt as of late is a heaviness that I, I have not felt in a long time. Just a, a heaviness for, for, for general just concern, concern for people, concern for God's church, concern for our, our nation. And in spite of all of these things, here's, here's, here's what I want to bring us home to for just a second before we get into the message this morning, and that's this, is that there may not be a lot of things, a lot that any of us can do about much of the circumstances that we see. There may not be 
much that we feel we can do about things that are happening in Washington, D.C. There may not be much that we feel like we can do about the, 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 the political and social unrest that's in our country right now, but here's what I know is true. As God's people and as his church, we still have a mission. We still have a mission. And here's what I know to be true in my heart this morning. My neighborhood needs Jesus. My next door neighbors need Jesus. People that live in my county need hope. People that live in my zip code who are addic- have addictions need deliverance. People who are homeless in, in, in our community, guess what? Homeless shelters in our area, they need supplies and they need people that are homeless need shelter. The elderly need encouragement. People still need hope. Our people, people that live in our communities, in our zip codes, in our towns, in our neighbors, right next door, still need Jesus. And guess what? All of these things that people need that are all around us, right where we live, none of that is going to come from a capital. It's all going to come from heaven, and it's going to come through his people. Can I get an amen? It's going to come through his people. So we still have a mission, despite all the distractions around us, you know, um, and I'm not preaching at anybody this morning. I'm preaching with you. I'm preaching to myself because I've experienced some, some difficult moments over the last few days. And, uh, and, and God's just reminded me that, guess what? I'm still in charge. I'm still in control. And, uh, you know, like Noah said just a minute, just a few minutes ago, he's not the God of who, who used to be. He's still the same God today. And he's called us. He has called us and given us a mission and a purpose. So let's continue to be God's church and God's people. Amen? Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about prayer that changes everything. We're, we're in a time just of, of 21 days where we're just focusing on prayer. We are, we, are, we are combining that with fasting because there's nothing, nothing in the world, nothing in Scripture that you'll find that moves the heart and the hand of God like prayer combined with fasting. All throughout the scripture. Listen, did you know that the only time in scripture when God Almighty, God Almighty, the one true living God, actually changed his mind about something? Literally, read, read your Bible, actually changed his mind, said, I am going to do this. And then turned around and changed his mind and didn't do what he said he was going to do was because someone prayed and fasted. And said, God, have mercy. He said, I am going to, I'm sick and tired. I've had it. I'm fed up with these people. I am going to destroy them, wipe them off the face of the planet. And somebody prayed and interceded and said, God, just give them another chance. Don't destroy these people. And God relented and withdrew his hand of judgment. The only time in scripture was, was a time when someone prayed and fasted. It moves the heart in the hand of God. Nothing like prayer and fasting. So I just want to encourage you to continue. Listen, if you haven't even begun to participate in, in, in this, uh, this season of prayer and fasting with us yet, I want to encourage you, jump right in. Start today. Start now. Spend some time with God. Spend some time alone with Him, seeking Him, praying, him, pray, praying to Him. I want to talk to you about prayer that changes everything. And from a popular passage of Scripture, and I've preached from this passage before, and it's, uh, it's from the, the passage that has be- become known as the prayer of Jabez, this very popular passage of Scripture that books have been written about, studies have been done uh, about this prayer and, and about this man Jabez. And I want to talk to you again this morning about this passage because it is a powerful passage of Scripture that we learn so much from. I want to read it to you. It's just two verses of Scripture. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, here's what it says. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Verse 10 says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. How about that? 
and God granted his request. Nothing else is, is ever mentioned about this man Jabez in the entire Bible. We don't know very much about him at all. All we know is these two verses of Scripture about this man Jabez. He shows up, prays a 29-word prayer, and it is eternally memorialized in Scripture for all of us here 2,000 or, or however many hundreds of years later to read about and study, it has become memorialized. It has become a, a, a model prayer for many people. Books have been written about this powerful prayer of Jabez, and that's it. It's that simple, 29 words that this man prays, and he's eternally memorial, memorialized in Scripture Forever. I want to talk about this prayer because there's, so, there, there, there's several things in this passage, in this prayer, that are so powerful that we need to learn and we need to understand as we're praying over the next couple of weeks, as we're fasting and seeking God for our lives over the next couple of weeks. The first thing I want to say about this passage before I just bring up three simple points about this prayer is that I want us to keep in mind that that. The most important thing about us praying is not about what we can get from God. We don't pray because of what God gives us. We, we pray the most important thing and the most important part about us praying is that when we pray, we actually get God. It's not about what we get from God, but rather when we pray, we get him. We get God. When we pray, when we spend time with him, when we talk to him and we communicate to him, guess what we get? We get God Almighty himself. He communes with us. He hears us. He will talk back to you. He will speak to your life. So just keep that in mind. It's just a, a blanket opening reminder to all of us as we're seeking and focusing on spending time with him and praying at the beginning of this new year is that when we pray, it's not about what we get, what we're asking him for. Those things are important. We're going to see that this morning. But more important than anything, it's the fact that when we pray, we get him. We get God. So Jabez understood this. And the first thing I want you to see this morning about this prayer is this, is that Jabez recognized who he was praying to. This is so crucial. Recognize who it is that you're praying to. Listen to Jabez's prayer in verse 10. Jabez cried out to who? To the God of Israel. That's significant. The God of Israel is a title. It's a destination. It's, it's actually a, a person, a specific Individual God that Jabez is praying to. Jabez cried out, the Bible says, to the God of Israel. And the reason this is so important is because the God of Israel was believed to be and still is believed to be today the one true living God, the only living God, the God of Israel. That's, that's, that is the description, that is the meaning behind that term, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was the one true living God. And there was a distinction, there was a difference between the God of Israel and many other gods that people prayed to during Jabez's time. During Jabez's time, people were polytheistic. The, the, the Canaanites, the, the, the Philistines, and the Egyptians, they all prayed to, to different gods for different things. There were different deities that they would pray to. There was the God of the earth. There was the God of the seas, God of the air, God of procreation, and on and on and on. So depending on what the need was, people would pray to that specific God. So it's, it's very, very significant that Jabez prays to the God of Israel. He's saying, I believe that there's only one God. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the only, the one true living God. And it's very important. I can't emphasize this enough in the day and time that we live in that, that we understand who it is that we're praying to and that we believe that about the God that we're praying to, that there is no other God but him, the one true living God, the God of Israel. In a day and time when people pray to so many different gods, listen, we saw in Congress just this past week a senator stand in the halls of Congress and pray in the name of another God other than and the God of Israel. Listen, let me, let me put an emphatic explanation point on this statement this morning that there is one true living God. 
one true living God. Um, God said in Isaiah, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no other God. There is no other God. Listen, when you're needing wisdom, when you're needing direction, when you're needing provision, when you're needing whatever you need in your life, it is never acceptable to seek these things through a psychic, through a horoscope, through tarot cards, through, through, through any of these other mediums. The scripture distinctly, clearly warns against this because when you do, those things the Bible says are evil and you open up the door for demonic activity in your life, in your heart, in your home, in your children's lives. You are opening up the door and the Bible clearly says that the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. There is one God that we pray to. Can I get an Amen. Come on, I shouldn't even have to ask you for some of those amens. Let's just, uh, let's just say it. John 10.10, 10, the devil only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We're to give no place to the devil. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jabez understood this. Living in the days of the Old Testament, he understood that there is only one supreme God Answer, capable of answering his prayers. And Jabez prayed a really big prayer. We're going to break it down a little bit here in just a second. But Jabez understood this, that there is only one God that can actually answer my prayers. How many of you believe that when you pray something, that you're actually praying to a God who has the power to answer you? He has the power to change things, to do something, to move heaven and earth on your behalf. Jabez was recognizing this by this statement, by crying out to the, the God of Israel. He was saying, this God has the power to answer my prayer. And he was recognizing that. He understood that, that he's in a covenant with God. Did you know that if you're a born-again believer, what does that mean, born-again? That, 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 that simply means that, that you have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You, you, you understand and you have accepted that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth to die for your sins. He did that on a cross. He was buried and in, in the grave, rose three days later, just like he said. And when you put your faith in him, when you believe in the Son of God, when you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are born again. You are made new. And every born-again believer is in a covenant with God. Jesus was that new covenant with us. The blood that he shed became that new covenant between us and God. He is that new covenant that we are a part of where, where, where God promises to love us and to care for us and to guide us and to comfort us and to counsel us and to protect us and all of these things. It is a covenant that Jabez understood when he cried out to that God, to the God of Israel, Jabez understood, I can pray this kind of prayer. I can pray anything, and I can ask him for anything, because I am in a covenant relationship with God. Covenants are powerful. My kids understand this covenant to an extent with me as their earthly father. Both of my children understand that they can come to me when they need anything. They can come to me and they can say, Dad, what do you think about this? And I'm only going to tell them something that I feel is good for them, that is in their best interest. They can come to me and say, Dad, I need help, and they know that Dad is going to do everything in his power to help them. They can come to me and say, Dad, I need some wisdom on this, or what do you think about this, or, 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 you know, on and on and on. They can ask me for things. They can come to me. They know that I'm going to protect them. I'm going to provide shelter for them um, if they need it up until they hit 30, and then they're out on their own. Um, they know that, you know, they can come to me um, for anything that they need. My kids understand this. They believe this. Listen, they can come to me and say, Dad, I need help with my finances. I need some, can I borrow some money, Dad? And I'm going to do everything. They can come to me and say, Dad, will you forgive me? You know, I wrecked your car. And I'm going to say, yes, Carson, I forgive you again. And, um, <laughs> and, and, they, and, and they understand that they're going to be forgiven. There may be discipline. There may be consequences, but there's also going to be grace. Can I get an amen, Carson? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I love you, baby. Um, 
My kids understand it. My kids believe that Cash App, Venmo, and my refrigerator are part of the new covenant. They believe this, and that's okay. That's how they should feel about their, their earthly father. And that's exactly how this covenant thing works with us in our, in our heavenly father. It's a covenant. It's, it's kind of like, the, the best way I know to describe it is, is the covenant of adoption. It's, the covenant of adoption is even different than, than when, when, when a husband and a wife marry. And, and, and this is a good thing. When a husband, if, if a husband dies and a wife with children remarries, that husband, guess what he does? He automatically inherits stepchildren, whether he wants them or not. He, 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 he gets them, and that's a good thing. Um, but, but this covenant relationship with God is, is different. It's even different than that. It's even different. It's different because it's, it's, it's like the adoption covenant that we experience here in this life. Because it's, it's a covenant where, where the parents choose their children. And when they choose that child in adoption, they say, I am choosing you, and you have access to everything that is mine. And that's the kind of covenant that we're in with God. And, and Jabez understood this. He had some, something. He may not have been able to explain it just like I'm talking about it, but in his heart, in his gut, he understood that, that the God that I am asking of, the God that I am praying to, he, he is the God who created heaven and earth. He, he, the earth is his, the Bible says, in the fullness thereof. And he understood that because it's all God's, it's also all mine, and he, there's nothing I can't ask him for. The covenant that he understood was powerful. So Jabez understood exactly who he was praying to. And I just want to remind us this morning and encourage you to remember as you're praying over the next couple of weeks, as you're seeking God for different things in your life, remember who it is you're praying to. Listen, it's not some little mamby-pamby little God, now I'll lay me bow down to sleep, and God, if you can, and I don't even know if it's okay to ask you for this God. But listen, he's a big, big God capable of answering big, big prayers. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus. He's the only God there is. And we can ask him. Those of us that are his children, we are in covenant with him. He is our father and we are his children. And there is nothing we cannot ask of our God. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Second thing I want you to notice about the prayer here that Jabez prays is, man, he just prays like he means it. Prays like he means it. When you pray, pray like you mean it. Pray like you mean it. L listen to the passion here in verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me, God, and enlarge my territory. Listen to, listen to the fervency in, in his prayer. Listen to the passion in Jabez's heart as he cries out to the God of Israel, Oh, God, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. This wasn't some timid, reticent little, you know, prayer to six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. No, this, this, this is a prayer where he is crying gut level, crying out to God crying out to his God because he believes that God can do this for him. I love this quote from John Bunyan. It says, It's better for your prayer to be without words than your words to be without heart. Listen, Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joel, they all describe God as a, an all-consuming fire. That's how these prophets, that's how these men of God in the scripture describe the God of Israel as an all-consuming fire. And that's how he wants us to think of him and approach him as this all-powerful, almighty, all-consuming, all-consuming fire. And I believe God wants us to assume his nature. 
Listen, I know, I understand that there are times when, 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 when we just need to be still and listen for the still, small voice of God. Absolutely. There are times when we just need to quietly meditate upon his word. There are times when we just need to reverently worship him. But then there are times when God wants us, I believe, to leap into the fire of his presence and cry out to him from the depths of our heart, from our gut, and tell him what it is it's on our hearts and tell him what it is it's on our minds he's an all-consuming god we need to pray with passion pray like you mean it i want to ask you a question this morning when when is the last time when is the last time you just prayed like you meant it when's the last time that you prayed like you were praying to a god who could do what you were asking him to do When is the last time you prayed and just believed that God was almighty, all-powerful, all-consuming? There is nothing. He can move heaven and earth on your behalf. When's the last time you prayed like you meant it, like this is the God you're praying to and that he was actually going to do this on your part? Listen, God convicted me of this just recently. I shared with you just a minute ago in the opening that I've gone through a a time over the last couple weeks and and several days where I've kind of gone back and forth. Anybody besides me kind of waffle sometimes in your your faith or maybe not what you believe, but how you're believing it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm like, I just walked, I walked straight through that brick wall because God's with me, you know? And then there's other times when I'm like, Man, could somebody get that door for me? Because <laughs> I don't know if, if I can open it. And, and I can go back and forth like that sometimes. And, and, uh, and, and recently I, I've done some of that. And, and I was praying just, just a few days ago. And I felt like God said, when's the last time you prayed like you believed I was going to do what, you, what you're asking me to do? When's, would you stop praying these insipid prayers, Tori? You know what that word insipid means? I wrote this down because I, I looked for a word that described how I felt like I had been praying. I've been praying some anemic prayers. Anybody ever done that? You probably have and didn't even recognize it. Insipid prayers. Here's what that word insipid means. Lacking in qualities that interest, stimulate, or challenged. Dull or flat. That's how I have been praying. I felt like God was challenging me. Pray like you mean it, Tori. Pray like you believe I'm the God who can do what you're asking me to do. When's the last time we pray like we believe it? When's the last time we pray, God, I I need you to move heaven and earth for me. God, I need you to move heaven and earth on behalf of my marriage, on behalf of my children, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of this country right now, this world, your church. When's the last time we prayed like we just really meant it, like we really believe it, prayed with passion like we see Jabez pray. Listen, God is under no compulsion, zero. Everybody say zero. Zero. God is under zero, no compulsion. He is under no compulsion to respond to us when we pray with complacency. I believe that. The Bible says that God said, I would rather you be hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, what did he say? I I vomit you out of my mouth. He's under no compulsion to to, to answer these complacent, God, if you can, if you will, maybe, and, and, you know, kind of prayers. Listen to how Jabez, oh God, oh God, he prayed passionately, like, 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 he, like he meant it. He is certainly not going to force feed us his promises. We have to ask. That's what we see Jabez doing here, asking God to move on his behalf, to do something. He passionately believed that he was praying to the God who could, and he was passionately praying like he meant it. God offers us promises, but just like Abraham we got to step towards them and aggressively pursue and aggressively believe the promises of God with a heart filled with faith. This is what distinguished Jabez from his brothers. This is what I believe distinguished Jabez from his brothers. The Bible said the only, th- only two things we know really about Jabez is that um, he was more honorable than his brothers. The Bible tells us that. And then it goes right into the prayer that he prayed. 
And so I think maybe the only thing that really distinguished Jabez from his brothers is how he believed, how he lived his life, his faith, the way he prayed his, his, his prayers. Um, he made this passionate pursuit of what God had offered him. The fact was that, or is, that, that many people in Israel at this time had become complacent um, about conquering Canaan, but not Jabez. Many of the Israelites had come, com, become complacent about conquering Can, Canaan, but Jabez, Jabez wanted every square inch of what God had promised him. Every square inch of what God has pro had promised him. Pastor Noah said a minute ago, he's not the God that used to be. He's still the same God today. The promises in his word weren't just for those people. They're for us today. But we have to pursue, pursue these promises. Here's what I believe. I believe it's time for some of us to get on our knees and, and to cry out to the God who created heaven and earth and believe for him to move heaven and earth on our behalf and pray like we mean it. Recognize in your mind, recognize in your heart who it is you're praying for and that you believe that he can actually do it. So Jabez understood exactly who he was praying to. Don't forget who you're praying to this morning. And, and it's so important for us to, 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 to get a picture of how he prayed and then look at this. Look at what he prayed for. Jabez prayed. He prayed on purpose is what he did. He prayed specifically and asked for some specific things. So I want to encourage you to pray on purpose and pray, pray believing, pray with expectancy. Um, when you first look at this prayer, maybe you've done this too, you know, with years, years ago, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago when, when the book, The Prayer of Jabez came out, this little bitty book that, 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 that churches read all around this country, when that book first came out, I remember reading it for the first time and kind of going, man, it sounds kind of like a selfish prayer to me. It sounds kind of self-serving. It sounds kind of like this, you know, uh, prosperity kind of a prayer to me. If, if you, the first time I read it, and, it, and, it, and at, a, at a casual glance, it kind of appears selfish. Verse 10, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me, God, and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. Sounds like a pretty selfish, self-centered prayer, doesn't it? It, it, it first, at first glance, it, it can sound very selfish, but when you take time to examine Jabez's prayer in light of the promises that God had given to, to Israel, it's far from selfish. It's, it's far from selfish. Um, as a matter of fact, it's extracted directly from what God had promised to give Abraham and all of his descendants this prayer, straight from what God had promised. Scholars believe this. They believe that this prayer was probably prayed right around the time of Israel's conquest of Canaan. Remember the story in the Bible where, where God, God brings his, his people, his children, out of, out of the wilderness, wandering for 40 days, and, and after, I mean, 40 years. And after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, it's finally time to possess the promised land. So when Joshua commands his people to go in and take their land, Jabez simply steps forward and made his request to God. He just... He's just praying for, he's just asking God to give him what God has already promised him, what God said is his, what God said he could have, what God said is attainable for him. So when you think about it, as big as, and bold as this prayer was, all Jabez did was have the confidence to ask and the faith to believe that God could give him what he had promised. It wasn't covetous, it wasn't greedy, it wasn't selfish. He simply wanted what God said was his. He simply wanted what God said belonged to him as his child. Some people, listen, pray big prayers, and we want to ask God to do big things, but we, we pray it on our own terms, right? Here's what the Bible says. Here's what the apostle said in James chapter 4, verse 2. He said, you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Listen, if you want to release, release big faith, for big prayers, you have to pray in accordance to God's will. Pray in accordance to, accordance to God's will. Listen to what 1 John 5.14 says. It says, this is the confidence we have before him, 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Dwight L. Moody, the great revivalist, said this, and I love this. He said, let a man feed for a month on the promises of God, and he will not talk about how poor he is. You hear people say, oh, my leanness, how lean I am. It is not their leanness, it is their laziness. If you would only read from Genesis to Revelation and see all the promises made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the Jews, and to the Gentiles, and to all his people everywhere, if you would spend a month feeding on the precious promises of God, you would not be going about complaining how poor you are. You would lift up your head and proclaim the riches of his grace because you couldn't even stop yourself from doing it. Dwight L. Moody said this, what has God promised you from his word? I'm going to ask the band to join me on the stage now. What has God promised you from his word? Claim it. Declare it. Believe it. Declare with Jabez, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Listen, it is not, it is not selfish. It is not greedy. It is not covetous to, to, to ask God to, to bless you, to ask God to hear your prayers, to ask God to move heaven and earth on your behalf, in your circumstances. But we need to learn to pray what God has said is ours, what God has promised us. Pray his word, pray his will. Listen, if the Bible says it, I believe it. If the Bible says it's mine, if the Bible says I can have it, then I want it, and I believe that I can. If the Bible says, listen, if the Bible says, I am, I, I'm to be on top, not the bottom. I'm to be the head and not the tail. Then I am going to pray and say, God, I am sick and tired of being trampled under people's feet. I'm sick and tired of being the, the tail. I'm sick and tired of being on the bottom of this life and of this world. And God, I am asking that you would raise me up. I'm, God, I'm asking that you would increase my territory. That's what Jabez asked for. If the Bible says that by his stripes I am healed, then you know what? I am going to pray and believe God for my healing. I'm going to pray and believe God for healing on someone else's behalf. And I'm going to ask God for the faith to believe that. If the Bible says God gives me the desires of my heart, then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, God, you know what? I've got this desire. These are my desires, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell God about the desires of my heart. If the Bible says that Christ offers us joy and peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, and I'm stressed to the gill right now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, God, I need your peace. Would you give me your peace? And if the Bible says that, that, that he came to give me life more abundantly, then I'm going to pray and I'm going to say, God, I want life more abundantly. The way I'm existing now, this is not abundant, God, and, and this, is, this is not the way you intended me to live. And God, I am praying and asking, give me life more abundantly. If the Bible says that he gives rest to the weary and peace to the troubled, strength to the faint, wisdom to anyone who asks, then I'm going to ask God, give me your wisdom. I need your wisdom, and I'm going to believe that the God of Israel is a big enough God to give me the wisdom that I need in each and every situation. If the Bible tells me that if I raise up a child in the way that he should go, and right now my children, my, 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 my teenager, my young adult, my grown kid is running from God, and he's living in rebellion, and he's not living in accordance to your word, God, I'm going to stand on the promise that you said if I raise up a child in the way that he he should go, that when he is old, he will not depart from it. And they will come back into the household of faith. And I'm going to pray and believe the promises of God. The promises of God, listen, the Bible says, the Bible doesn't say the promises of God are yes, no, might, maybe so. He said the promises of God are yes and amen. Yes and amen. 1 Corinthians 1.20. The promises of God are yes and amen through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I know I'm yelling at you a little bit this morning. <laughs> you sound like I'm yelling. I feel like I'm yelling. Maybe it's because I, I believe what I'm telling you. 
I believe it. And I don't know about you, but I've had a, just a little bit of, of spiritual claustrophobia as of late. Where I just feel like, God, do the prayers, have they meant anything? Are you hearing your people? Is it doing any good? Look at our world, look at our country, and God, is it a little bit of spiritual claustrophobia? You know what the only answer I've ever found to spiritual claustrophobia is? It is to press in, to dive in, to press in in prayer and seek God with all of your heart, seek God with all of your mind, seek God with everything within you to draw closer to, it's the only answer to break through from, from spiritual claustrophobia. That's why this, this season of prayer and fasting is so critical, so significant. Because we need him. I don't know about you, but I, I feel like I need him. I feel, like, I feel like our nation needs him. I feel like his church needs him. If there's ever been a time in our lives where we have needed God, it's now. In closing, I feel compelled to share one last thing with you. It's kind of related to this prayer that Jabez prays. Jabez, you know, asked God to bless him, increase his land, increase his territory. Here's something I, I believe about this prayer. Jabez could not have, he couldn't have had the faith to pray that kind of prayer had his current estate not already been blessed. Had his current estate not already been blessed. Had, had he not already been living in such a state where he had seen and experienced the blessings of God, he wouldn't have had the courage, he wouldn't have had the faith to ask God to do something crazy, something even bigger. God, increase my land. Bless me and increase my territory. If his current estate wasn't already blessed, he, he wouldn't have had that faith. He wouldn't have had that courage to ask God to do even more. And, 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 and here, 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 here's the thing that, 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 that goes along with this. Many people, we ask God to do these kinds of things. God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do this. God, will you give me this? God, will you help my marriage? God, will you bless my, um, my finances? God, will you give me a better job? Will you give me a pay raise? God, will you, you increase my territory? Many, many of us ask these kinds of, of prayers, but listen, listen, do you think for a second, do you think for a second, the, the Bible ends that, ends that passage, that prayer by saying, and God answered his prayers. God granted his request, the Bible says. Do you think for a second that, that God would have granted his request if in his current estate, um, Jabez was, um, Jabez was uh, growing marijuana on the back 40? Do you, do you think that, that, that God would have, have granted his request to in, increase his territory, to answer this big, bold, audacious prayer if, if Jabez was, was beating his wife? Do, do you think that God would have, have blessed this man and answered his prayer and granted his request if he is cooking up meth in the kitchen and selling it? Do you think God is going to bless the, the request of a businessman to increase his business and expand his influence if he's cheating people or if he's cheating the IRS? Do you think God is going to bless his children and, and bless them abundantly and increase their territory if they're stealing and robbing from God with the tithe and the offering? Jabez could ask this prayer because his current estate was blessed. And so many people were asking God for big things, asking God for big things while living outside of his will, while, while not living in conformity to the word of God, while not living in obedience to God's word. And we're asking God to do big things, and when God doesn't do it, it what's wrong with God and why even bother to pray? God's un, under no obligation to prosper disobedience and sin. 
But a righteous man, but a righteous man, complying with God's word, has a right to seek and ask for the blessings of God. 1 John 3, 21 says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because He keeps His commandments because we, will, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. I want to close with a question this morning. Are you under conviction about something? Are you under conviction about something, about anything in in, in, in your life? Is God asking you to, to change something in your life? Is it an attitude, a mindset, uh, you know, uh, anger, unforgiveness, cheating? I, I, is God asking you to change anything in your life? One of the things that, that fasting does, one of the things that, one of, one of the greatest benefits for, for, for fasting, for, for, for abstaining from, from food in order to pray and seek God in my life, one of the greatest benefits that always does for me, anytime I do that, is you know what it does? It exposes things. It exposes things in my life to me. God gives me clarity to see things that, man, I, 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 maybe I didn't see before. Maybe I'd never noticed. Maybe I've never seen that I I'm, I'm really am that short-tempered and hot-tempered. Maybe I am that impatient. Maybe, maybe I have been holding a grudge. Maybe he exposes things. See, the closer you get to the light, the closer you get to the light, the, the brighter the light is and the easier it is to see things, right? He's no longer in the dark. And the closer we get to God, the, the, the more clearly we can see. And that's one of the things that fasting does is it just peels away layer after layer after layer of me so that there can be less of me and more room for him in my life. And so is God, is God convicting anyone of anything? Is he, is he exposing some things to us this morning? Is he showing some things to us this morning? I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm talking about holy conviction. Conviction leads to change that benefits you. Condemnation just leads to guilt and sorrow, pain. I'm not talking about condemnation. Listen, if God's convicting you of anything, listen. Listen to his voice. Listen to his voice and obey. I want to ask everyone if you would to stand with me this morning. Jabez concluded his prayer, his ask, his request by saying this. He said, let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. You know what that is to me? Part of that is to me is it's an, an admission. Let your hand be with me. It's an, it's an admission that God, every good thing in this life, everything that I need, everything that I have, everything that I will have, it comes from your hand. It comes from you. And let, let us not forget that, listen, it's not, it, you're not where you are. You don't have what you have. You're not going to get what you get because of you, because of, because of your, 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 your good looks, <laughs> your, 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 your striking looks and, and talent and, and ability and creativity. God has given you all of those things. Every good and perfect gift is an act of God's good grace to you. Everything good comes from Him. And he prayed, keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. Keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. You know, Jesus even told his disciples to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from, from the evil one. Keep me from harm. I want to pray a prayer over us today as we close out. And I want to ask God to, to do some of these things. I want to ask God to, to do these things that, that Jabez has asked for. 
God, enlarge our territory. There's nothing wrong with asking that. Why? Because you know why, God? Why, why would I want God to enlarge my territory? God, God because I want to be an even bigger blessing to even more people. God, in, increase my territory so that I can be an even greater influence. God, in, increase my territory because you promised in your word that there are blessings that are mine. God, protect me, protect my family, protect our family. God, protect our church. There's some bad things going on in the world right now. Listen, there's a virus out there that's taking lives. There's social and political things out there that are, that are dangerous. There are mindsets that are, that are dangerous, that, that we are susceptible to falling into, that our children are susceptible to. That, that, listen, God, protect us. Anybody with me on that one? Anybody want God's protection, his hand of protection on your life, on your family, on your children? Anybody got some grandkids you might be a little bit worried about the kind of world that they're going to grow up in? pray this morning just by show of hands let me ask you this anybody in the room ever seen God move a mountain anybody ever seen God move a mountain I mean you you prayed and you asked God to do something and he did it and he's the only one that could do it anybody been there I've been there I have been there listen I'm not talking about a God who's a genie in a bottle that we pull out when we need him to do something for us. But I'm talking about a God who loves us enough, and cares us enough to hear our prayers, and he's big enough and he's real enough to actually answer those prayers. And I've seen him do it, and you have too. Anybody in the room have a prayer that you need answered? I do. If you don't, then... Pray for our country. Pray for our country. We need to pre ple cry out to God. God, we need you to move heaven, on, heaven and earth. And I want us to pray for God's healing and protection. Can we pray together? I'm just going to lead this time in prayer, and I want you to pray. You cry out to God however you want to cry out to him this morning, but I want us to agree in some things this morning. Would you bow your heads? Would you just lift your voice? Pray however you want to pray, but I'm going to lead it. And let's pray in agreement together this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. We come to you in the name that is above all other names. He is the only mediator between yourself and mankind. You said that no man comes to the Father. Jesus, your son, said no man comes to the Father but by me. We come to you in the name above every name, your son Jesus, who died for us today. God, there are promises that you have given to your people, going all the way back to the days of Abraham, and you said these promises could be passed down from generation to generation to your children and your children and your children too. And Father, we stand on your word this morning for some promises that you've given us. Father, we pray that every promise in your book that has been given to your children, we claim it today in Jesus' name, that we be the head and not the tail, that we be the top and not the bottom. By your stripes, God, we are healed in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. By and large, this church has been protected from this virus. We've had some here and there, but they have come out okay. They have come out well. Father, we thank you for your hand of protection. We thank you for that blessing this morning keeping us safe. Thank you for protecting us from our enemies today, Lord Jesus. Protect our hearts, protect our minds, guard our hearts and minds, guard the hearts and minds of our children and our grandchildren today, Lord Jesus. May they always seek you and know you and love you, the God of Israel, the one true living God. May they not be distracted, may they not be deceived. May they always know you, God. Father, we stand on that promise today, Lord, that when we raise up a child in the way they should go, they will not depart from that. I pray for every mom and dad, every grandparent today who has a wayward son or daughter, grandchild today. God, we are praying on their behalf, God, that they will be saved, that they will be snatched out of the fiery pits of hell, God, that their lives, their soul be saved today. In Jesus' name, we stand on that promise today. 
we stand on and maybe you're here today and you didn't raise your child that way and you say well I, I missed that part of the promise I didn't raise my kid the way they should go you can start today interceding on their behalf and guess what God will hear your prayer I believe that with all of my heart. He will hear and answer that prayer. God, we pray for every lost son or daughter today that they would come home. They would come home to the household of faith. They would come to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray for every blessing. Increase our land. Bless your people today and increase our territory, Lord Jesus. That God, that we might be a greater impact, a greater influence on the world around us today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the God that moves heaven and earth, the God that created it all. Thank you for the God that moves mountains on our behalf, Lord. We give you praise, and this morning we recognize and we will not forget who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said together. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Could you lift your voice? Could we lift our voice? Could we sing to the God of Israel today? Could we sing to the God who we have prayed to, that we're praying to this month, and believing God to move on our behalf? Could we lift our voice in worship? And could we believe every word that we're singing this morning? Would you do that? Lift your voice and sing. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you never fail. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Come on, let's sing the second verse together I know I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me See you. 
time together as a church, believing in greater things ahead. I loved the line at the beginning of uh, Dad's message where he said, we don't pray for what we can get from God. Sometimes we just get God, and that's the best thing that we could possibly ever get. Amen? I've got a I've got an unpleasant school loan that I've just been asking God to send John Stamos in and just smite it for like four years now. And it's never happened. But every time I pray that prayer and the other prayers that I pray in the morning, it makes me feel closer to God. It reminds me that God's in control, that he has provided for me. I've never lacked. That school loan has never taken the clothes off my back. Reminded of scripture where it says, if God cares so much for the birds that they don't worry about what they're going to eat, how much more does God care for me? It's the same thing with our prayers. I think sometimes we pray and we expect our situation to change, but really what changes is me. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. We love you on your way out. You have an opportunity to give at the doors. We'll see you Wednesday, hopefully for prayer night. If not, we'll see you back next Sunday. We love you. Have a great rest of your Sunday.